Good morning. Welcome to our stream service from Brighton's Parish Church. It's good to have you share in worship with us. Before we get into our service proper, let me share with you some celebrations from the last week. Keith Wandsborough, Jesse Wallace, Linda Clark, Mena Bat, and John Gray all celebrated their birthdays. And so from all of us here at Brighton's Parish Church, we send you birthday greetings. And as a church family, we celebrate you today. There, are also the go- there was also the golden wedding anniversary for Bill and Eileen McCardo, Gillian Beaton's parents. And so our congratulations to you both as you mark this very special anniversary. If you had a celebration this past week and we've not mentioned it, then please share it now in the live chat. Prior to the start of our service, you'll have seen the notices for today, and these are also available to download from our website and will be repeated at the end. Last week, I intimated the passing of Jim Anderson, and his family wished to let you know that the hearse will pass the church at about 11.45, 11.50 this Tuesday morning, if you wish to pay your respects. Afterwards, you are also welcome to pop round to Suzanne's home for a memorial tea between 1.30 and 4pm and she will be managing social distancing and numbers to keep everyone safe whilst you pay your respects. As we begin our time of worship now, let us take a moment to pause, turning our hearts and minds towards the Lord that we might be open and receptive to his voice today. And if you wish, please join me in lighting a candle at home to help us slow down and do this. David wrote, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. We gather to praise and worship our God who abounds in goodness and showed that supremely in Jesus. So let us worship God. As we sing our first two hymns, praise is rising and my lips shall praise you. Oh, 
Let us pray. Loving Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and we praise you that already, in the person of your Holy Spirit, you are with us. Help us as we lift up our hearts to you in song, to lift up our hearts also as we hear your word read and your message proclaimed. Help us to respond to your call and to accept your challenge to be your disciples, being ready to leave all to follow you wherever you lead us. We praise you that you are the all-powerful God. Our hearts are thrilled as we read of the miracles you performed during the years you walked the roads of Palestine. The many who were healed of physical, mental and spiritual problems. The dead raised, the hungry fed. Forgive us, Lord, that we so easily forget that your power is the same today, for you are the unchanging God. Enlarge our vision, Lord, we pray. Help us to recognise that the God we claim to worship is the God of transforming power, not only of hearts, but of bodies and minds and spirits. Forgive us, Lord, for all in our lives that is contrary to your mind and will. Forgive us for selfishness and self-centeredness, for criticising others, while excusing ourselves of those same faults. Enable us to have eyes and hearts open to your Spirit's guidance, that we may walk in your way and follow you as you seek to lead us forward into an ever deeper relationship with you. We commit ourselves to you afresh this morning, Speak to all our hearts during this time of worship. Renew and revive us, we pray, and send us out into this new day and week, inspired and focused on you, determined to be wholehearted in our discipleship, and that you and you alone will be glorified in us and through us. We join together now in that prayer you taught your first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. As lockdown has begun to ease, some things have started back and schools will be starting back in just over a week's time. As such, on the 16th of August, we'll have our moving up service with a short input from each of our Sunday school groups. There will also be a time of prayer for schools and the wider Braes area on the evening of Tuesday the 11th of August, so watch out for the notice in due course. Nevertheless, it is likely to be some time before we start back with worship in the sanctuary. Yet when we do, it will be crucial that we start back with clarity about why and what and how we function as a church congregation. Indeed, it's important to know these things and to have that clarity even in the midst of lockdown. So, what ideas or teaching or values of Jesus might guide us in preparation for that time and just now. 
Well, over August, we're going to explore five passages in the book of Matthew, five instances where Jesus calls his disciples to himself. And each moment teaches us something crucial about being church together. Let us now turn to God's word. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 25. Jesus calls his first disciples. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and illness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came with him. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. week I intend to restart Community Corner but plan to change it around slightly with some different content. This is where I need your help. One of the things we've really missed in lockdown is seeing one another even though we may be in regular communication on the phone or in other ways. So one idea is for us to put together a short video each week with pictures of you. Pictures of you out a walk or doing something or simply at home. And if you visit someone from the congregation or walk past their home and you know they don't have the ability to take and send in a picture, then why not take one of them? Ask their permission, of course. This cannot be a substitute for seeing each other in person, but nevertheless, it could be a meaningful contribution to our worship. So please, do get involved and help others get involved as well. 
let us now be family together and turn to God in prayer. In Psalm 25, verses 4 and 5, we read, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Father God, you are our rock, our fortress and our deliverer, in whom we take refuge. At the beginning of a new week, Lord, we hold fast to you for whatever comes our way. You are unmovable, and above all, you are forever faithful. Loving Heavenly Father, your word speaks promises of healing and restoration, and we thank you for the miracles you still perform today. Today we claim those promises over our friends and families. We believe in the healing power of faith and prayer, and we ask you to begin your mighty work in the lives of all those who are on our hearts. Please reach down and surround those dear to us with supernatural peace and strength and give them the faith to believe that all things are possible for you. Protect them from discouragement and let miraculous healing begin. Father God, thank you that you love each one of us. We know that you hate what illness is doing to our loved ones and to all of us who love them. We entrust each one of them into your loving hands today in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in the world who are suffering at this time. We find it hard to grasp the situations where thousands of your children are suffering and dying from starvation, wars, exploitation, disease and natural disasters. Be with and protect all those who are working to alleviate their suffering. Protect all aid workers from illness and exhaustion. Father God, we bring you are prayers for our government and all those who are responsible for making decisions at this time. We are becoming used to waking up every morning and hearing news that is sometimes incomprehensible and it is easy to become overwhelmed and anxious. Lord, you are in control and we hand all our worries and uncertainties to you. Speak peace and assurance into our hearts so that we can comfort and encourage those who need to hear the hope that is found in knowing you. Give us courage to speak of your grace and favour. Strengthen, we pray, Lord, key workers who are still working tirelessly for the many needy people in our community. We thank you for all they have done and continue to do. We pray especially for our care homes where there are still cases of the coronavirus. Protect the staff and bring healing to the vulnerable elderly residents in their care. At this time, Lord, we bring the Braze area to you and ask a blessing on each church and congregation. Father, you know that this is a challenging time for us all as we seek the furtherance of your kingdom. We look forward to the time when we can meet again face to face in our church buildings. Hopes are high for a return to more familiar times. We long for a welcoming handshake, a friendly smile and even a wee cuddle. But we do know in our hearts, Lord, that things will have to change and we know that we will need to embrace the change. We pray that you will speak clearly through your word and in our prayers. You have said that you are doing a new thing and we ask that you will open our eyes, ears and hearts to receive your message. Give us humble, thankful hearts ready to do your will. Lord God, we pray that you will be with Scott as he brings your message to us today. Give him health, strength and wisdom as he faces the challenges that lie ahead of him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take my 
thy feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every part as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it mine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal Let us take a moment to pray before we think about God's Word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable, be open and receptive to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Boys and girls, if you could receive an invitation from anyone in the world, from any time in history, and go to their birthday party, who would you choose? Would you want to go to the birthday party of someone famous? Or someone who changed history? Or, or maybe a family member you didn't get to know? Who would you choose? Who would you want a birthday invitation wrong. I'll give you 30 seconds to think or talk about that at home. If you like, put up in the live chat who you picked, because I'm sure there's some really interesting ideas. I wonder, if you got that invitation, would you be excited? A little nervous? How would you feel? Because when that invitation is put in your hand, you would feel something. And I think the same is true of the disciples today. It's likely the disciples knew Jesus before this particular encounter because John's Gospel has an earlier story. But Jesus wasn't quite ready to start his mission at that stage and Matthew doesn't have room to include everything. So here comes Jesus, drawing alongside these fishermen at work. And he says to them, come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. 
These words would change their lives forever. And with one sentence, Jesus gives them an invitation, a calling into a relationship and into a purpose. When Jesus says, come follow me, he literally meant come behind me. And these fishermen would have known this to be an invitation to become his disciples, to learn his teaching and his way of life. A good teacher, a good rabbi would expect to have a group of such followers, but normally the rabbi would be asked by the would-be disciple. So Jesus is doing something different here because it's Jesus who comes calling And in the giving of that call, come follow me, come behind me, there is an invitation to relationship. They've already met Jesus, as we saw, see in John's gospel, because John the Baptist told his disciples that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and is God's chosen one. So what must the disciples have felt when Jesus said to them, come follow me. Excitement, a bit nervous, every emotion you could imagine. Because here is God's Messiah calling them into relationship with him. They're no longer just people in the crowd. They are called to follow, to know Jesus more intimately than others. And in that relationship with him and being present to the Lamb of God, the Messiah, their lives will change because they will experience the presence of God daily and personally. This is an invitation Jesus keeps extending again and again and again. He extends it even today. Jesus extends you this invitation to know him, to be present with him every day and in such a way that it changes your life. This is the core of Christianity. The God became a man. He died and rose again. And so now you can know him, experience him for yourself. For he offers this invitation to you and to all of humanity. Jesus invites us into relationship. He calls us all to follow him. I hope, I pray you've responded to that invitation. That whatever your age, you can say, I've chosen to follow Jesus. I am his disciple. If you'd like to know more, then check out last week's message or get in contact with me. And if you'd like ideas on how to nurture that with children and young people, then check out last month's and this Tuesday's video on our YouTube channel with Parenting for Faith. Because there's some great ideas shared there. And it's not just for parents and carers, it's for anyone in our church family who's around children and young people, even just on a Sunday morning. So tune in this Tuesday if you're able. Jesus called these disciples as he calls us all into relationship. But he also called them into a purpose. For he said, I will send you out to fish for people. It's a purpose he would repeat at the end of Matthew's gospel. Go and make disciples of all nations. On both occasions, Jesus invites them. He calls them into a purpose. And that purpose has been core to the church for 2,000 years. I'm encouraged that in the Church of Scotland, we stood by that call in a report which was published nearly 20 years ago. It was called the Church Without Walls Report. And in it, they said the core calling, the core purpose of the church was to invite, encourage and enable people to be disciples of Jesus Christ. This is a phrase I'll probably keep coming back to, even in this series, because today we've looked just at the invitation of Jesus, the invitation to be his disciple. 
But part of being a disciple of Jesus is that we are called to go and make more disciples of Jesus. And again, this was different to how rabbis operated. Normally, someone would come and ask the rabbi to be their disciple and if accepted, they would follow the rabbi and learn from the rabbi. But eventually, that disciple would learn everything they needed. Their apprenticeship would finish and then they would become a rabbi themselves and maybe attract their own followers. Not so with Jesus. For he says, go and make disciples, teaching them to be everything I have commanded you. Jesus does not graduate his disciples because a disciple of Jesus remains a disciple. Yet they are commissioned to invite others into that relationship with Jesus as well. So why this difference between Jesus and the other rabbis? Why is it he who calls? Why do his disciples stay as his followers? Well, it's because of who Jesus is. Just before he reiterated that purpose, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Because of his death on the cross, which conquered sin and the grave, and being vindicated by his resurrection, Jesus is shown to be God's chosen one, the Messiah, God in the flesh. Jesus then is the Lord. And so disciples are called into allegiance to him. They are committed to be committed to him. Not simply his teaching, not even his church, and certainly not our own preferences. For we are to follow Jesus. We are to heed his call. And see, not as a suggestion, but as his command. Go make disciples. Go fish. We are called to invite people to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Yet here's the thing. Do we heed that? Will we heed this call of God? You see, it wasn't only the disciples who followed Jesus. We read today that large crowds followed him. But the crowd followed Jesus in a different way. The crowd was amazed by Jesus. They even like, liked what they heard from Jesus on the whole. Many even may have agreed with Jesus. But the nature of their following was different to that of the disciples. The disciples were committed to Jesus. But it was the crowd who would commit Jesus to the cross. It was the crowd who turned on Jesus and shouted, crucify him, crucify him. A disciple has committed themselves to follow Jesus, to heed his call to relationship and to our purpose. I wonder, friends, is that us? Is that Brighton's? Is that the Bray's churches? Do we follow Jesus as disciples? Or are we following Jesus like the crowd? Jesus extends you his invitation to relationship and to purpose. I pray that each of us accepts that call. May it be so. Amen. We close our time together with our final hymn, I Have Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, 
the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow, though none go with me, I still will follow. Go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. Go responding to the invitation of Jesus. Go in relationship with him. Go to share in his purpose. And as you go, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore.
I'll worship your own. 